Now it's time for Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup here right next to the San Diego Landings in Point Loma. And boy, do we have a great guest for you today. Captain Brian Woolley from Dana War Sport Fishing is here talking about the bass fishing capital of the world. So you stay tuned. This is is Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network. Inside information is everything when it comes to catching fish in Southern California. You need a code group to connect with what's happening on the water. Fishdope.com is your code group. Inside information available at your fingertips seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. They become your code group. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Catin, 365 days a year. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, temperature and chlorophyll charts, hot bite icons, and more. Take it from me if If you don't have fishdope.com, you're not part of the the in-the-know crowd. Membership is affordable and good for an entire year. Plus, use the special code and save $30 on a new fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Captain Jamie Tennis from Season Sport Fishing here. For the past few seasons, a dart-styled metal jig has come into play in a big way for tuna offshore or even rockfish down deep. AFCO's crossbreed jig has quickly become the go-to for many since it came onto the market. AFCO's crossbreed jig is good to go right out of the package with a 4X treble hook, heavy-duty split rings, West Coast colors, and sizes 60 gram to 120 gram. Pick one up today at your local tackle store or learn more on AFCO.com. Hey, San Diego, the Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. Visit your San Diego County Ford dealer now through September and make it your best summer yet. Get great offers on the most popular Ford trucks and SUVs and experience hands-free highway driving technology with Ford Blue Cruise, available on select vehicles. It's the Make It Ford Summer Sales Event, and that means now is the best time to get behind the wheel of your brand new Ford and drive it home today. Only at your San Diego County Ford dealers, they'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup ish. You know we're we're halfway yeah, there right yeah, now yeah, as, yeah, yeah. as we speak. Uh, hopefully everybody's listening on the app. Having a little yeah. uh, little uh, radio live radio issue as yeah. sometimes happens on ten ninety. But yep. our favorite Let's Talk Hookup app, as we always say, that's the best way to listen to Let's Talk Hookup. And for those of you that are listening live right now, that's where we are, baby. Yeah, yeah. Listen on the Let's Talk Hookup app with Captain Brian Woolley. Good morning, guys. What's up, Woolley? Great What's to happening? have you and uh, fantastic uh, uh, time to be. Talking about fishing at awesome. Dana or sport fishing. Yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting start to our right? season. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of we talked about it a time or two. I think when I was here before, it just seems everything for us seems like it's a little delayed. Everything's just you know six six weeks kind of behind schedule is how it feels. It was similar last summer for us for sure. So maybe it's a new normal. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, lots of ebb and flow to the season. Like 100%. the reports from Dana Wharf were so I mean, tumultuous, isn't the right word? But like one week, just like oh my god, like every All over the place. every trip, everything biting, and then the next week, you know, a condition change totally. where where it's a little more struggle, and the next one, like banner everything, and the next one, these guys caught them, and this one didn't. It's been, you know, we're just. It's been up and down. Yeah, sure. a little a little bit. Yep. But Absolutely. with that said, lots of ups this year, too. Totally. No, the guys that are, you know, making a run like Marcus on the Fury, he's had some th- gotten into that great yelltail fishing over at Clemente. We've had some good days at Catalina. We've had some great days along the beach. And, uh, you know, our six-pack guy's getting out and catching some tuna and stuff, too. So it's, it's all there. All those elements right. are there. It just... We haven't found the continuity and the consistency that we're more accustomed to later in the season. So it, it'll develop and totally. it'll work out. It's just... 
I think fishermen are just, you know, we're impatient, right? Yeah, no we doubt. now because, you know, we know how good it gets and we know how fun it can be. It's just a matter of, you know, it's in its own process. You have zero control over it. You just got to kind of roll with it. So Yeah, for sure. But it's just, it, it's, well, they, they predicted this, uh, a La Nina right. year, right? Right. Colder water, stirred up water. I mean, one totally. day it's 71, one day it's 62, right? Totally. And that was us last weekend, right? We we went to bed and woke up the next day and the water dropped eight degrees. You Come know? on. And it's just like, okay, this is going to be a fun week. Yeah. Right? Right. And just waiting for things to kind of shape up. And it does. It'll get with it. And that's just kind of been the nature of, the, of our summer. But with that being said, we're you know still doing what we can. We're getting the boats out every day and we're, we're catching stuff. So... You know, and just yeah. condition sets are what they are, and you adapt, and you move, and you make things work. One thing you guys do that I always love hearing the report of, and now we get to get the live update, how's the release bass tournament going? And give us awesome. the whole details about what that is and the, the whole the whole. Cool. Life. So that was just a fun thing that, uh, you know, we, we came up with I over love there to, to get people out. What's awesome about all of it is all of the entry fee that's generated through this all goes to CCA. Sick. You guys are so that, Wow. That's so cool. Not, you know, it's not buying prizes. It's not going into Dana Wharf's coffers. It's all going to CCA. So it's catch and release. It's uh, June, July, August. Uh, catch and release calico bass, sand bass. Um, our big fish last month was 7.6. I think Ooh. it was a calico. Nice, nice one. one. So I don't know what the leader is yet here for August. But, uh, yeah, any open party trip, you buy in. When you get to the landing in the morning, it's 5 bucks. Um, you're entered. You catch and release fish that, you know, meet or exceed whatever that weight limit is for for um, where they're at and you're entered and you're released, I love that so. it's a, and it's just a just a side pot you can choose Total to enter pot. you can choose to not fish has yep. to be released absolutely I think it's so cool and it's cool we got awesome sponsors our right. sponsors have been fantastic um so it's it's been fun, and the guys that are winning the prizes, like Corey donated two boxes of awesome baits as one of the prizes, um, and the guys were super stoked on everything from you know our Daiwa sponsors, um, if I can name them here, of uh, course, Fishworks, Daiwa, Turners, Hogan's. Costa, like we've got some. That's solid, some big hitters. That's sponsors. cool. So it's it's been great. And so the winner wins like a prize pack of. There's of a first and second stuff. place okay, cool. prize. Yep. Where, where have the big fish come from in the in the winning months? So it, it's funny. The, the one that won last was caught on a twilight trip. Okay. Um, just over some good open hard bottom. You know, we don't have a whole bunch of kelp in our zone right now, so most of the fish have come over the open hard bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, on live sardines. Okay, that's awesome. Yep. And a seven pounder. It was a good one. That's a really nice that's one. That's a nice one. And where sure. where what uh, where's the leaderboard sitting for August so far? So I'm not exactly sure what the top one is. I don't think it's anywhere near seven pounds. I wouldn't think we've had yeah. any of those big ones here yet. Um, so it's wide open for somebody to come open. in with a nice Someone big bass. Come in and swoop easily. Come in and swoop in in August. And and does it have to be a local trip? Can it be like what's it the does. parameters? So it's all coastal. Okay. So it's not open to charters. Okay. And it's not open to Kalmani or Catalina. So an open party. So, coastal trip exactly half day three quarter half day, day three quarter day twilight that's so rad yeah, so i love it it's cool it gets a little bit of you know guys you know fishing hard for for something cool and ultimately at the end of the day that the, the ben, you know benefits cca so. yeah one thing we always talk about that i like so much about dana wharf when you mentioned that half day three quarter day twilight is you guys you guys shuffle boats around to take care of the customers and that's something that's unique to dana wharf sport fishing that i think is so cool that not everybody does is you're so family customer first that you'll you'll shuffle whatever charter boat around to make sure that you always have something to accommodate everybody like Absolutely. the boat not might be the same but the run will be there totally you know nine times out of ten no matter what you can do you guys always try to provide that we do you know we'll, we'll try and you know fill in some open party stuff around the charter business the tricky part of that is when you run the boat right God. one day <laughs> you're bet. running two half day trips the next day you're at catalina the next day you're offshore <laughs> so you got to kind of keep sure. a pulse on what's going on everywhere yeah um but it's kind of cool too i enjoy it like you know keeps you on your toes we'll have to fish a couple days this week and we'll be at catalina a few days this week and you know we just got to kind of figure out what's going that's on. That's really cool. So. And also why Dana Wharf has so many great cap. I mean, you guys are, you see everything. You fish coastal, you fish the beach, you fish the islands. I mean, every one of your guys does it all the time. And, and and why, you know, you guys have such a reputation for having such good guys behind the wheels of the boat. Totally. And, and our guys, we've, we've had guys there for a long time. Yeah, you know, exactly. We've had some, some good runs with guys running our boats, and uh, it's, it's been fun. And we have a great, great location. We're yeah. close to... Clemente for our overnight stuff. Catalina is a good strike. You know, offshore banks when that stuff uh, that offshore fish is there is is within easy striking range. And our our bass fishing and stuff like that through the habitats that we have both uh, above our harbor and below our harbor is pretty. 
pretty conducive. Dana Wharf kind of hits all the buttons that you would hope for for good sport fishing. There's there's great parking. There's really nice boats. You have a really good office staff. The closest of any sport fishing boat to bait and then to open water and right. then great fishing right in front of the harbor or, like you said, close distance. If you are trying to shoot out to an island, like all the it's things all you could hope for is is what you guys Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And, you know, we have awesome bait. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. We have a great our bait company, you know, Everingham. Just does everything in their power to, you know, keep the best possible life. That's cool. Course too, so it's huge. What's Baitland been like this year? So we, we've primarily been fishing with mostly sardine this year. We have, over the last couple of weeks, had some nice loads of anchovy. <clears throat> that Those guys have worked tirelessly to get some of that into our accounts or uh, into our receivers there for us for our bass fishing. Um, but it's been, it's beautiful bait. That's and, cool. you know, it's the receiver's small enough. To where, where you know it's it's a perfect size where it keeps the right amount of bait this service the fleet and the, the private boat fleet but you know it's not massive they're able to keep it replenished and mm-hmm. a good opportunity so you know they do have cured bait for the guys that want that but the bait's always been fresh and nice that's we've, cool we've had really good bait this summer and I, mean, I just can't imagine what difference that makes you know from when i mean you, you were around when it wasn't that way totally. all the time like totally i mean there's bait bait anxiety right i mean you can get there <laughs> like what, what are we going to get today and those guys do a phenomenal job of as they do here too right i mean i feel like i'm preaching to the choir but uh it's we're, we're very fortunate you, you just forget i mean they're everingham great brothers we're so lucky to have here that you you literally forget that how automatic things are that not everywhere you just get to drive up to a place and throw the line over and put as much live bait on the boat as you could possibly want and then start your day like every other fishery in the world you're either paying a fortune for single baits or it just doesn't exist or catch right. your own or use a frozen i mean it just we 100%. we just forget you know we forget how yeah. lucky we have it here it's not a you know panic go we got to go meet the boat totally water someplace it's it's there pull right up scoop it it up there you go man yeah where else in the world can you do that yeah where yeah (laughs) thanks to the everingham brothers right yeah it's pretty awesome and um so clemani i mean uh, you guys fish clemani a lot and catalina yeah we've added a cool element to our arsenal this year too with that new san mateo that that delta that's a cool boat anson's bought um Blouse. Like, now, now describe that boat. So it's a 43 foot Delta, you know, something like you'd see up in the Northwest, right? Yeah. It's like a smaller version of cool Outer Limits, boat. right? Um, they're so bitching. They're like kind of low to the water. They're sleek. Platform. They just look fast. You see that thing tied to the docks? Like, dude, that thing's fast. They are fast. I mean, the guy Chase that runs that boat, we left yesterday at 530 to go fish Catalina, and he passed me, and he was fishing on a three-quarter day, you know, <laughs> before we even, you know, he beat me to the island by an hour, right? yeah. and he left after me. But uh, it's allowed us to have a good opportunity to, you know, get a, a all-day element over to Clemente. That's cool. So, and it'll, it's going to be great when this offshore stuff kind of comes together, too, just an, an added little deal for our, our people. Um, but yeah, you know, Marcus has had some great fishing. It sounds like that stuff's kind of been a little up and down the last few days. But when you know there, there's the current and things line up, it sounds like it's just been phenomenal fishing. That New San Mateo is that all charter or their open party trips? So there too? are there are open party trips on that boat. They fish twelve guys, open party. It's a little uh, you know, price will go up depending on you know how far they need to go for for fish and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's limited to twelve. On an open party trip, if you charter the boat, I think they had 17 guys on the boat yesterday. So there's always, you know, we can bring what you need to bring up to capacity there on your charter. But uh, open party is 12 guys, and it's fish is phenomenal. Three deck hands, you know, three crew captain, and you know, two other deck hands on there. So you're you're well taken care of. The tackle that's available on the boat, so, you know, it's all dial equipment. It's top of the line stuff. So it's all set up really good for those guys. You, what a you, nice program. You guys it's at Dana awesome. Wharf know somebody at Daiwa to help you with yeah, the hookup on all that? that, that hey, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's been great. And it's got RSW, so everything stays nice and fresh. Hey, that's rad. Yeah. What a cool rig. Wow. That's a cool little boat. Yeah, and maximum of how many people? So I, I think the max charter i i mean i don't think you want to fish more than 20 people on there on a charter yeah um, but it was like but how cool is it 12. with those 12 yeah it's Elev- ideal yeah you elevate the ticket price a little bit and you only have to run with 12 dude i mean think about that that's a you know that's a big boat with 12 it, guys on it that's awesome you know i could be wrong like 250 bucks right is in the ballpark but these guys are paying for an all-day fishing trip at clemente that's crazy man that's, you know, they're that's catching crazy yellows, awesome so there's no bonks it's not an overnight it's no just like but it's fast it's, so that's it's the fast. thing yeah. Fa- yeah you can Get fish you clemente on a full day home. yeah you're there on a full day so how about that so sick yeah, that's very very cool nice deal. that's good stuff what else is new at dana wharf 
Gosh, man. Um, let's see. I, I, you know, they're they're building our parking structure out in our parking lot. Oh, That's they are kind of a big deal. So, yeah. so where is the parking structure? Right in front? It's out, or is it out you, to the to it, it's, out, as you come think, in? As you come in on uh, Harbor Drive and you turn left on a Golden Lantern to pull in, it's right on that that corner across okay. from where on, the restaurant on the left are. side. Yeah, on the left hand okay, side. Okay, where the the, the boat storage was. Yeah, uh, close. Yes, yeah. that that same little parcel, like the the launch ramp. It's in the same little vicinity as uh-huh. the launch ramp, but on the more kind of west side of the, okay. the parking area. Um, they're cranking on it. They've got a couple levels already poured and no laid kidding. up. Um, and they're just they're grinding away on that thing. So what's so. that going to do for you? That's going to add a thousand parking spots. Thousand. Wow. And it's for Dana War Sport. Well, fishing? it's for the harbor. For the harbor. It will be you know for. Why can't it be just be for Dana War Sport? I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have the capacity to fit a thousand people. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. But it's gonna it's just another added element of you know the harbor. They're just revitalizing a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's I love, I love good. it. They're, they're changing some of the dock configurations. Um, they are going to do some some building. Uh, That's going to help a lot. and stuff like that. It's going to make it nice. Um, when it's going to be completed, I, I, I don't know. I'm not kind of in on any of that um, info. But the visual that you can see that they're working on, yeah, it's a little hectic. Parking can be a little chaotic and stuff right now. But, uh, you know, our anglers are there early enough in the morning where they can, you know, make a short little walk. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be great when it's done. What boat yeah. do we typically find you on well, when we're fishing, Willie? So I'm always on the Sun Fun. I've been on that boat for 27 years and the, for a long time. The runs may bounce around, but Willie doesn't. That's, no, that's, I'll, I'll be there. You're always, yeah. you, know, you know, I'll have my days off where we'll have uh, another guy running the of boat. Course. Um, perfectly capable, which is awesome about Dana Wharf, too. We have perfectly capable guys, you know, moving around when guys are gone. But, uh, yeah, I'll be on the Sun Fun, and like, like I said, we'll run anything from half day to twilights to all days and no short. And is that way, I mean, most of the, with most of the skippers on most of the boats, too, do, do most commonly, does, you know, Marcus always run his run, and yep. is Pico always driving his boat, and, and the boats the boats do musical chairs, but not necessarily not the, the captains? the operator. Okay. Yeah, the operator's always on the boat, and uh, the run, yeah. Really, this time of year, none of our boats have a dedicated run. They really haven't for a really long time. Maybe in the winter time, the boat's going to be more um, prone to running a three quarter day and a half day. Um, but this time of year, I love that. You're three quarter day. We'll run three quarter day or all day or, or all whatever. Day. Yeah, we're all I, over the place. So, so the Sum Fun, a lot of history. Don Hanson's yeah. first boat, right? Yep. Same boat. Same boat. Unbelievable. Off the pier. Built, and built when? Built in, I think it was '58. Wow. That's sick. So. Yeah, it's the same hole as like the Mission Bell. Um, the Kalani is the same hole. The Sea Watch, they're all kind of the, the same hole. They're configured obviously different uh, above the deck there, but uh, this is a timeless hole. Nice steel and uh, yeah, just steel s- still alive and cranking. Yeah, it's yeah. badass. Wow. Um, the opening chapter of Michael Folks's in, uh, history of sport fishing features the Sum Fun. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll which is really cool. Out. And yeah. so that shows you some of the history and how it used to operate off the pier and stuff yep. like that. So, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, Same with the... So the you, you're driving the, history, man. It's, I mean, it's a great old boat. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And she gets licked. The book gets bit. Still <laughs> works. Bit, yeah. Single screw? Nope. Twin screw. Twin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it, it goes. Yeah. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for today. Lots to talk about here on Let's Talk Hookup with Captain Brian Willie from Dana War Sport Fishing. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, like you said, just so, so much going on and so much fishing that they cover at Dana War Sport Fishing from the coast to the islands, inshore and offshore. And now we're just going to have a great day talking about it, talking about our favorite boats and our favorite trips at Dana Wharf. And we want to talk to you. If you want to join us this morning, give us a call at 213-432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090. Is how you reach us here on Let's Talk Hookup, or send us a text. Again, texting the show, the most popular way here on Let's Talk Hookup these days, and the only way you can send in your text is through the Let's Talk Hookup app. It's a free download. It's the easiest way to listen to Let's Talk Hookup. You'll always find Let's Talk Hookup on that Let's Talk Hookup app, and when you do text in your questions to Willie, make sure you include your contact information, your name, and a phone number, because we are giving away a great prize at the end of today's show, and we come back. We're going to be telling you all about it. Lots of great info coming your way. Catch reports coming your way and a whole lot of fun with Captain Brian Willie Dana Wars Sport Fishing. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network. 
Anyone that's been to the East Cape knows Smokey's Curing Company Cantina, the best food and drink in Los Barillas, and a fun place to hang out and watch your favorite sporting event. If you're lucky, you probably had Smokey's process your fish to take home. Their quality and service is top-notch. You'll see me at Smokey's Cantina hanging out with the owner, Chris, and my buddies when fishing in the East Cape. And we always send our fish to be processed at Smokey's, too. Now Chris has added one of the finest boats in the East Cape available for you to charter for a day or more of fishing. Vaquera. It's an immaculate 35 Cabo with a sea keeper and Captain Diego Romero, one of Baja's best. If you're looking for a great charter boat when fishing at Palmas, Playa, or other resorts, Vaquera, booked at BajaSmokies.com, should be your choice. So, when you're headed to the East Cape, be sure to stop by Smokies Curing Company Cantina. Send your fish to be processed there and fish aboard the 35 Cabo Vaquera. Check BajaSmokies.com for more details. Hey, it's time to talk about where it's always biting, and that is Point Loma Seafoods right next to the San Diego landings in Point Loma. I was in there the other day. We had some fresh Pacific Northwest salmon that was like the, some of the best king salmon I've ever had. Fresh from the Pacific, like super fatty, and I mean, the array of fish that they have. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm a, a, their their cooked case is the thing that blows me away too all the time. All the smoked fish that those guys do off the charts, and then if you look in there, all of the the shrimp and lobster and lump crab and all that kind of stuff that those guys do, amazing fish case is just unbelievable too. Like the array that they get, like you say, whether it be a troll caught salmon from Alaska or baqueta from down in Mexico, local sea bass, local halibut. Yeah. I love it. It's so killer. It's, it's pretty amazing. And then, of course, for lunch or dinner, nothing's better. Point Loma Seafood's right next to the San Diego landings in Point Loma. All of us at the American Angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season. We realize how precious your vacation time is, and we are truly grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us. It's important that your experience is memorable from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat. Hi, I'm Lori. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at American Angler's sportfishing.com. Come fishing with the American Angler family and make a memory. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning talking fishing on that Let's Talk Hookup app and talking a lot of fun. Hey, again, we're ready to talk to you. Phones are already packed up. If you want to get your shot today, give us a call, 213-432-1090. As we mentioned, a fantastic prize today. And, man, thanks so much to Wooly and just the whole family at Dana War Sport Fishing. And, and that's what it really is. It's a family-run business. And, you know, the, the family is the Hansons, but really it's all of you guys. I mean, like, you, you, you said it best. I mean, you've been there for how many years? 27, and there's and, guys and, you know that have been there way longer. Yeah, than that's me, what I was so. just gonna say. You're yeah. you're you're still a spring still chicken still compared cold. to some of the some of the boys. Here. I mean, it's a real family run spot, and we just want to say thanks so much because we are gonna get to wave away a couple of rad prizes. Once again, there will be no coin flip uh, to determine a winner, but it'll be determined what the winner's getting because we're yeah. giving away a prize to both the callers and the texters today. On the caller side, we're gonna be giving away two half day trips uh, on board. Uh, at a Dana Wharf Ford Fishing, and then we're also to the, uh, we're, so we're going to give away two half days to one caller or texter, and then two three quarter days to a caller or texter. The coin cost is going to flip gonna who wins three quarter versus who's, half. Who gets the exactly. Three quarter. So, Thank yeah. you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So if they're going on the three quarter, they're likely going fishing with you. Possibly. Yeah. No, or the half day. On, yeah, or yeah, the half day. Or. That's yeah. what I say. That's what's so cool so, about yeah. Dana Wharf. You don't know. You don't know what you're running, oh, but you're right. But you're on the some fun no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah. That's your. That's what I love about it. It's so cool. Like there will be a half day. There. 
there will be a three-quarter day. Yep. You don't know what vote it's going to be because that vote might be chartered. And if that vote's chartered, instead of telling the guys, hey, Someone's sorry about scared. it, guys, come back tomorrow, no way, man. We'll slide another vote in. We'll take you fishing. That's what we do. For sure. I love it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the phones, Rick. How about we start it off this morning with Alex. He's calling us from San Carlos. Alex, thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, I was just wondering, I've never fished out uh, over in that area. Do you guys ever do, like, trips where you can maybe, like, hit up Catalina and try to get, like, Yellowtail and then maybe go a little bit more offshore and go for Bluefin? Is there a, a, a particular trip you guys go for? Yeah, absolutely. We fished Catalina yesterday, and uh, we'll be there tomorrow. Uh, we do have boats. On a three-quarter day. That, on all day. On an all day. Yeah, five to five trips. Sorry, thanks for that clarification. Sure. Yeah, on an all-day trip. Uh, we do, you know, it's not every single day that we have a boat at the island. Um, again, we try and have our three-quarter day and our uh, you know half-day trips kind of take precedent over that. If there's an open boat, then, yeah, we'll put a, an all-day trip online. Um, and then as far as fishing offshore, yeah, if there's fish in our area and we can get to it, we'll fish it. We've had some really good, uh, you know, past seasons offshore when that fish has been around. And we've made some good catches and, you know, all of our boats are capable of, you know, getting out to, to that zone if that stuff's within our striking range and, you know, making catches. Uh, the, the Dana Pride. You know, they have plenty of bait capacity and an ocean's route, which gives them that, you know, added ability to go a little bit further offshore than, than some of the other guys are able to. And, uh, yeah, we, we have the platforms and the capability to get out there and make that make those catches if that stuff's around. That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, awesome. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Just, like, the versatility. And you're so close to Catalina. Yeah, I mean, like, it, for a 10 knot boat, yeah, it's a three-hour ride, right, yeah, to, to get to the island, which is, you know, it is what it is. But, uh yeah, it's plenty close to yeah. fish it on, a, on an all day. Hey, Derek. And a place where it, it, it was lush for 20 years in one season can just be gone. You know, like, it's so it. wild. Fastest growing plant on the earth, right? Yeah, I mean, supposedly this stuff can grow a few feet a day, right? And often yeah. water conditions and stuff. So, yeah, who, yeah. who knows? Yeah, it's, wild. It's, it's so important to the... To, to what you do, right? What we Especially do, calicos sure. and Absolutely. stuff like that. Having the kelp come back, huge. It's big, and it's nice having it. And what's funny is, you know, we'll go through these years, and you know, some of our our anglers will forget how to fish in it. I'm right. sure. Oh, I'm, I'm like, totally sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. How, how do I? You know, where do I? Cast yeah, when when this is what we. You know, I'm a regular, and I fish on. I fish on the Sun Fun twice a week, every every summer. You know, all day long. Right. And do the same thing all the time, and then you do. You know, gear switch, and you fish hard bottom the whole time. You totally. come back to it. It's a different deal. Yeah. You're fishing with a different bait you're, and a different you're, style. Yeah, you're pulling and, line off your reels <laughs> and putting all monofilament back <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, guys are switch have to switch up rods and all kinds of stuff. That's but, fun. Yeah. Well, I had a fun text come through. It says, "Good morning, everybody. Uh, Brian is Dana Wharf going to do the house? Halibut Derby this year. Um, it's my favorite. I drive down from Buena Park to participate. I love it. Uh, keep up the great work. That's from Mark in Buena Park. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to kick that thing off for sure. In fact, we've had some good halibut fishing as of late. Some of our uh, smaller six-pack boats have been in uh, drifting up some some nice ones, and on some of our open party trips, we've seen some really nice ones. Um, but yeah, we'll get that back on board. We'll uh, we'll put something out when we uh, we kick that off here towards the end of the year. So um, my pawn hasn't hasn't taken every single halibut off of the San Clemente coastline. <laughs> no, still, and my phone has stopped ringing. There's yet, still too, some. Yeah. To, there's still some to be had. There's still there okay, for, for excellent, buddy Mike. Well, all right, Mark. Well, uh, halibut derby to come. How about we jump back into the phones and uh, speaking of Dana Point, talk to Chuck. Call us from Dana Point this morning. Good morning, Chuck. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. So I have a great text yeah. here while we're waiting for Chuck. Uh, Kenny in San Diego says, good morning. As always, great hearing Captain Brian Woolley report on the radio and the full in-studio bonus for two hours. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, we normally just get them for like 90 seconds, but uh, we got them for the whole time. Captain, Captain Woolley wants you, what's your favorite type of fishing and what other kinds of things do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, man. Um, you know, I have two, I have three kids and two of my boys really like to fish. Um, um, I like getting them out. You know, I've had had them out Catalina with me a time or two this this summer. A you know, little bit of surf fishing here and there. Um, I enjoy spending time with them, watching them catch fish. But you know, my I, I like just fly line live bait fishing. I think uh, for me that that's what I like. Be it kelp bass, yellowtail. I, you know, being on the water every single day, you, you see guys that either really know how to fly line bait, fly line bait, or or don't. It's almost like it's a lost lost art I'm sure. especially with the smaller baits and i think you know it's we're kind of at that you know that proving ground right where guys cut their teeth and really learn 
how to get a bait away from the boat and how to fish um, a live bait. Um, and that translates into, you know, what what's next, right? Your, your bigger game fish offshore and whatnot. Um, but I think something that we see a lot of is just guys trying to figure out how to fly line a live bait. Like I said, it, we see guys that are really good at it, and then we see, you know, like I said, this is like a lost art. Yeah. A lot of guys just... You talk Can't about it, it translating to bigger fish offshore. Nobody steps on to a, a you know a longer range boat and has better success than the full day boat regular. Totally, ever. You know what I mean? Like that's 100%. that's the guy who always is the highliner who fishes twice a week or once a week all the time and then goes through thousands of baits a year and you know the the art of picking a bait out of the hand well and pinning a hook on it and putting it into the water is just effortless and 100%. knowing when it's time to yank it out and knowing when it's time to put another one in that's the that, definitely you know, learning you, how to fish a live bait happens on the sun fun on the half day trip totally. and we'll we'll do what we can to help you get through the learning process right we'll from picking the bait to getting on the hook fast to how big's your hook to whatever it needs but it really is and i think you summed it up perfectly you know being able to do that and have that as you know part of your fishing acumen is it's monumental i think yeah. anyone's success at any level wherever you're fishing what's the number one mistake that you see or, or maybe common mistakes that you see i mean you guys see everything and all, all the time what uh what are things that hurt guys in their live bait game um right out of the gate the wrong bait in the hand well okay right the guy that's on the tank chumming or doing whatever is doing his best to you know get the the slower baits out of the hand wells and over the side is chum um and then hook size i think it's very important that you know, we see guys tying on their hooks every morning before the boats even slid to the bait receiver. All right. Right. That's a great point. So take a second, see what's going into the hand wells or into the tank before you tie on your hooks. Just small little things like that or ask the crew, what you know, what do we have for bait? What sure. do you think we have for bait before you tie stuff on? And I get it. People are excited and want to get their stuff set up so they can focus on whatever else. But those two little things, I think, would make a big difference. And cycling through baits. And you hear it. On any of these tuna boats, right? Change your baits. Change your baits. This is one of those things that we feel as operators falls on deaf ears, but it's so critical that you change your baits frequently. Let the, I tell my passengers, if you're whining in your bait and that thought of, should I change my bait, goes through your mind, the answer every time is yes. Yeah, totally. Right? Right. Just do it. Just spend the time and yeah. do it, and it's going to make a gigantic difference in your success. It's, it, it's that simple. But it, it, that doesn't happen. It's often. the same yeah. level of importance for a calico bass as it is for a tuna. 100%. Yet, for some reason, it doesn't seem to get treated the same way when your bait's in the totally. it's swimming in the kelp. Yep, hundred percent. And and I always say the same thing. And I'm going to say it again, even though we've said it, we've all said it hundred times. Like you always know, like every one of us who have fished with a fly line sardine, you always know when you fire a bait in the water and it takes off, and instantly in your mind, like, oh man, this thing's going to get a bite. Like yep. you, you all, we've all been there. Like everybody's pinned a bait on a thing, hit the water, and took off, and you know, like. Oof, it's just a matter of time. This thing's going to get a bite, and they nine times out of ten they do. And if you're not fishing that bait, well then keep keep recycling them right. until you are. Cycle sure. through, and you know when you're offshore fishing, you're fishing with sardine or whatever that bait's in the water. Other than maybe a yellowtail or you know a mahi or a tuna, well, there's not a lot out there that's going to bat your bait around. Right. You cast the bait into the kelp. You've got your mackerel, your barracuda, your short bass, your smelt, all that stuff beating your bait up as it's finding its way into the kelp. Even more so of a reason to, you know, make sure you're changing that stuff's what a good call. abused before it even, you know, a lot of times has a chance to find its way to the right fish. Yeah. Uh, so give us an example. Okay, you put in, like yesterday, what would you put in this receiver, and then what what did you have people tie on? So we had a small anchovy, <clears throat> sorry, and a little bit of sardines. So the guys fishing the sardines had some 1-0 hooks, and the guys fishing the smaller anchovies were fishing number four hooks. Number four. On a little bit lighter leader and, you know, 15 to 20-pound line versus a, you know, twenty to twenty five for the, the sardine. Okay. So it's it's just a scale, right? So gotcha. big big hook, a little bit bigger bait, smaller yeah delicate baits you're going to want to go with a, a finer smaller hook and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of differences in hooks these days also you can get you know super skinny wire that might be too skinny to catch a big tuna and a big you know heavy gauge wire that's great for a tuna but no reason to slow your bait down and right. and drag around a chove like you know even the gate the gauge of wire of the hook is important totally and you know those those 
finer point hooks are, are great, but a lot of times they go in fine, right? And a lot of times those, they back out they of the bait just too, as easy. right? So something that you can get good bite on your bait, whether you're collar hooking it, you're hooking it through the back or the nose hooking, however you prefer to hook your baits, just make sure you have a good hook. And, and a lot of it too, I think is just a confidence thing too. What do you feel best? You know, what yeah. hook do you prefer? What what knot can you tie into that hook to where you have that confidence and you go into it knowing, hey, this is the setup that I succeed with. Now I'm going to just take the next element and change my baits and do whatever and just kind of put it all together and make it work. Yeah, on, uh, on, the, on the same note, um, Nick in Chula Vista uh, has, has very similar questions uh, from our texting through our app here. He says, does hook placement matter when fly lining? Where do you put the hook on the live bait? Anchovy Absolutely. versus sardine. Yeah, great um, if you're straight fly lining, yeah, it does matter. Your anchovies, again, are delicate baits. You're, you're probably not going to back hook an anchovy like you would a sardine you know you're probably either going to delicately nose hook that anchovy or i prefer a collar hook on an anchovy um sliding egg sinker what does that mean a collar hook so a collar hook if you're holding the bait straight up in the air right or in your hand straight up you can kind of see where the gill plate comes along the side of that that collar of the of the bait you're going to poke the the end of the hook just barely through the collar down towards the tail point it towards the tail and then lightly poke it back out around that that collar hook where that gill plate fits against the the curvature of it's the, like a, the fish it's the bone that that the gill plate yep. like bumps right in front of their right next to okay yep. um delicate right those fish have fine gill filaments in there and stuff like that so that's where you probably want to make sure you have a, a sharper hook that you mm-hmm. can get in and get it on the bait and back out in the water quick um versus you know pinning a sardine through the nose the back or shoulder hooking something like that collar hook you do it wrong the bait dies you do it right you do it right it probably swims the best absolutely you know and you can probably get three three minutes maybe out of an anchovy that's collar hook proper so get it on your hook fast and into the water you know again this is where that element of being able to make the right cast having the right setup to get the bait away from the boat um, really comes into play and you learn that by repetition you, you said you like to have your guy on the tank try to keep the slower baits out of the tank and you know that you as the crew are trying to do your best job of putting just the, the primo in there what what are you and your crew looking for when you're in that situation like what what are you trying to keep out of the tank versus what are what's the good versus what's the bad just totally. by eyeball sake so you know you got your one your baits both sardines or anchovies that might have a little bit of weird red color on them right they little bit beat up on the sardine side maybe it's missing it's dry it's missing a bunch of scales um those are the easy ones to Mm -hmm. catch and those aren't the ones you want um guys that take you know 20 seconds to kind of look at a hand well maybe find a bait that's better than the rest color wise it's swimming um that that's a big deal and don't don't be shy. We usually have a guy on the bait tank, right, that's managing the bait, getting mm-hmm. in hand wells and chumming and whatnot. Don't be shy. Be like, hey, there's something in the hand well that doesn't look great. Maybe you could reload or do something like that. Yeah. Talk to the guy. Like, of course. Yeah, we're not going to tell you no. We're not going to give you a, yeah. um, a a fresh little dip of bait into the hand well. So, you know, I think sometimes people are scared to ask. Sure. You know, don't don't be scared. We want to so, see. Yeah. We want to see you catch know. a fish, especially you guys, you man. Catch a fish, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? For sure. Totally. So yeah, th- there's nothing wrong with asking for something if it looks bad, and if it looks bad, tell us. We'll get it out of the hand wells and over the side as best we can. So for sure, that's good dope there. Man. All right, the phones are back up. Let's try it. Yeah, you got it, Chuck from Dana Point. We got you back there, buddy. Good morning. We got it, man. How are you guys? Yeah, oh, buddy, go ahead. Away. Hey, um, yesterday I had deja vu. My my son's down there casting along the docks. Shows me a picture of outside the harbor. It reminded me of like the late seventies, like the Barracuda and the Bonita were out there. What was going on? There was like fifty boats. And this is the University of Fishing here. This guy, he's uh, well known up and down the coast wherever you go. You mentioned really <laughs> somebody on that boat. <laughs> so uh, and, uh, you know, I just it had right nothing to do with fishing. It was an outrigger canoe race. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yeah, it had nothing to do with anyone fishing. Lots of boats. Packed house yesterday, yeah, though. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Canoe race. Canoe race. <laughs> not <laughs> fishing. Not, not, not wide fishing. open fishing. Not fishing. It's August. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. There you are, Chuck. Hey, appreciate the phone call. When we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cookout coming your way. We're going to check in with the catch report, find out what's biting up and down the beach, and a whole lot more. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Cookout on the Let's Talk Cookout app and radio network. 
It's the perfect time to cruise on in and purchase a brand new Yamaha outboard and a great deal during Yamaha's Cruise Through Summer Sales event. From now until August 30th, 2024, eligible new Yamaha 450 to 425 horsepower outboards include up to seven years of coverage protection and 350 to 30 horsepower outboards come with up to five years. Need portable power? Then this will be a hit too. New 25 to 2.5 horsepower outboards come with up to $250 in dealer credit. Cruise your way through saving during Yamaha's Cruise Through Summer Sales event. Visit your local Yamaha dealer, Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Offer ends August 30th, 2024. Subject to change. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Select models excluded. 24-month Yamaha extended service added to 36 or 60-month factory limited warranty. Choice offered by Florida dealers is a 24-month Yamaha extended limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. Cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. In Florida, Yamaha extended service is administered by Automotive Warranty Services of Florida Incorporated. 175 West Jackson Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois. 60604 866 License number 60023. Give your boat the love it deserves and install a custom Sea Deck kit from Blue Seas Fabrication. Blue Seas is the West Coast only certified Sea Deck fabricator and installer. Sea Deck upgrades the look and feel of any boat, old or new. Sea Deck non skid decking adds comfort, convenience, safety, and value. Let the experts from Blue Seas Fabrication custom fit your deck, bridge, and interiors with stylish, durable, stain resistant, and easy to clean Sea Deck. Check BlueSeasFabrication.com and enhance your fishing experience. Experience. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. Here's the hot tip on the best fishing L.A. has to offer. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. They are home to L.A.'s finest open party fleet, including overnight on the Freedom, Catalina Freelance on the Pursuit, half-day trips on the Monte Carlo, and three-quarter day trips on the Sea Angler. For your own private charter, we have the Outrider and True Line available. There's always plenty of free parking and a fully stocked tackle store. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. Call 310-832-8304 or on the web at 22ndstreet.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Great info. Having fun talking Dana War Sport Fishing. Again, if you want to get through, join us this morning on the phones, 213-432-1090, or send us a text via the Let's Talk Hookup app. Lots of really good texts coming through this morning. And, boy, we mentioned it before, giving away a couple of great prizes. Two half-day trips going to one lucky winner, and then two three-quarter-day trips going to another lucky winner. The coin is going to decide who gets the half-day and who gets the three-quarter-day exactly. based on callers and Texas. Yeah, It'll be a sure. fun morning. So, yeah, definitely uh, get through on the phone, 213-432-1090. Lots of texts coming through. Uh, everybody listen on the Let's Talk Hookup app. Thanks for your participation. Appreciate that very much. And catch report right now, right? You got it, man. It's time for the catch report today. We've been talking about great the importance of great hooks all morning, and Gamakatsu is not just all about hooks, but they're also much more, including the new Gamakatsu fillet knife. Once you've tried one, you'll want more. There's such an amazing fillet knife knife and all the new tools are very special including the brand new spectra pliers that are made with ceramic blades so they'll never rust what a cool idea that is yeah. in the boat in the hand well never having a rusty uh, set of shears again on the boat you can see your local dealer or check gamakatsu.com for more information and boy like I said we this is when we don't normally get to get our couple of minutes in with Wooly but we're lucky to have him in the studio he gave us a great rundown at the beginning of the show but what have been some of the highlights this week in terms of catch report up at Dana Ward? You know, our water temperature bounced back. Uh, last week, like I said, on Sunday, it was 62 degrees. Um, it was cold. Yeah. And then, you know, yesterday was 71 on the beach. So a big wow. jump. Unreal. Just, yeah, in five, six days. How crazy. I know. It's crazy it's, currency it's, here. 
the, yeah, and the frustrating part is knowing that as fast as it drops, right. it can always bounce back as fast. Um, so, yeah, it came right back. Good uphill current in the zones that we have been fishing for three-quarter day, guys, has translated into some really fun calico bass fishing. It's perfect fishing for, uh, you know, if you wanted to bring a kid or a first time out just to help them build that confidence of, hey, I can get a bait on, I can cast it out and actually catch a fish. Um, I'm not going to say it's every bait, but there's been some stops and some opportunity where it's, you know, if there's you some get action. a bait away from the boat, you're going to catch a bunch of fish. That's cool. Whether or not they're all keepers and legal fish, yeah, who knows? You, you, you know, you'll go home with something for sure but it's been good opportunity for you know someone that's been you know oh i need to get my kid up before school that's starts perfect. now's the time to go do that and it's kind of been on the same same scale with our half day guys to still some good opportunity fishing through the dana point area up to the closure there at the south part of laguna um some good bass fishing up through there and then a little stretcher san clemente that was a little washed out this week with that big swell that was kind of pushing on the beach um for whatever what big reason. swell? We didn't see any of it here. You guys didn't see it. No. Yeah. <laughs> it was the south. Yeah. So big swell clear, cleared some of that stuff out, a little murked up in that little zone right there. But uh, it'll all change. Um, and the fishing at the island has been good. Uh, the Fury, he was on a two-day. He had some really good tuna fishing and some yellowtail fishing when they were fishing the outer banks there this week for their guys. And then Clemente again, that yellowtail current dependent for sure when the current's on it's been good for those guys the bass fishing over there has been great um some real nice calico bass fishing over there right now for them yeah and then catalina you know kind of the sleeper you know the water there we got around the east end yesterday and thought oh man the whole backside is going to be washed out and it was a little washed out in some zones but the current picked up was pushing up the back of the island yesterday really good exchange on the water back there 71 it cleaned it up pretty quick wow. so some great bass fishing back there some good kelp in some areas on the back of the island there that there hasn't been kelp for some time some good bonito across the front if you can deal with the skiff traffic and the sea lions um Dude. And yeah, just kind of across the board, it's all been good. So yeah, with all the bait selection that you have, man, that's that's good it's stuff. been great. So yeah, good across fishing. the board. Yeah, so plenty of opportunity. Good but you got to make a reservation this time of the year. Totally. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah, and it's easy. Just uh, just yeah, hit us online at danorf dot com or yeah. through your website. Right, right on the front there. page of our yeah, website, we easy. have a banner. You banner. can click Boom. on that; it takes you right there. So yeah, easy stuff. On that, uh, you know, short bass, fun action. Take the kid fishing. Take a friend fishing. Whatever. Uh, somebody new to it ish. Better to set them up with a conventional outfit because it's easier to manage the line when you're fly lining, or better to set them up with a spinning rod outfit because they can get the bait away from the boat a little easier, but then not as easy Good to one. manage the line when you're fly lining. Yeah. You see both all the time. I see both. I, I would say for the ease of them, I, I, I would go with the spinning rod. Mm-hmm. I think it's just easier to, to manage your fishing line. Right, maybe you might not feel it coming off as easily when you're fly lining, but it's going to give you that confidence of making your cast sure. where you can get it to where the bait needs to be to get the bite. You're getting bites, yeah. Way. You're getting bites, and then you know they succeed with that for a couple of trips, and you can kind of you know up their game and get them into a, a more conventional style of reel. But I think that's the way to go. And light line, you don't need. I mean, yeah, we're fishing the kelp. There's some of those guys that are hardcore, you know, braid guys with a heavy leader you can get by with 15 pound 12 to 15 pound line would be perfect and a little bag of small hooks and you're set easy perfect like it, yeah that's cool two one three four three two ten ninety one i have a chance to talk to brian have a chance to win those half day or three quarter day tickets on there uh jeff in costa mesa has a good question and this is a funny story i have to go with it too he says uh, uh nice show as usual bait color woolly mentioned selecting the right color assuming the bait is great do you want a green sardine or a brown one and why oh man um, it's always like that, that kind of blondish yeah. yellow color I yeah. think is that, that hot looking cured sardine. There's days where, you know, they're, they're more green than blonde. I don't know if it's just a matter of, you know, being more cured out or, or what the ones you want to avoid are the ones that have any aspect of red on their skin, right? Missing any scales, um, uniform in their color. You just want good uniform color with no red blotching or anything like that. And then, you know, if that means you got to take 20 seconds, hopefully it doesn't take any longer than that. Yeah. If it takes longer for you to find a bait in the handle, then, you know, us or guys on the boat aren't doing their job right. Right. Um, but yeah, 
take a second, analyze, and then make that make that grab and um, get it on the hook and over the side. Yeah, so I was on a long-range trip once, and there was a guy on there, a super good fisherman, and he'd sit at the bait tank and, and just look for the brightest colored green sardine that he could. He's like... I only fish the brightest colored green sardines. <laughs> but he got bit. I mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> what I'm going to say, right? It was like, I don't know, I was going to grab one that looks good, like you say. It that goes back that, to that confidence yeah. thing, right? Yeah. That's that guy's yeah. jam, I and mean, he was comfortable with it. Yeah. Run he, it. That, that bright green sardine, man. I'm not taking yeah. any of those ones that look yeah. really good, but yeah. there's like a little brownish, right? I, I somehow doubt a tuna is going to see a blonde sardine sh- just freight training by yeah. and decide not to eat. Ah, yeah, I'm really no, waiting for not, a wasn't green really Really waiting for a greenie here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, really going to wait a little bit longer somehow. until a green one comes by. Yeah, but hey, you know, you never yeah, know. You never know. Good, it was That's clearly working question. for him. Yeah, it was working for him. Like say confidence, right? Yeah. Well, the other thing too, you know, especially on you know on a uh, on, like on long range boats when they're you know when they have when they have their trays in the water and like they move a tray to pull bait out of it. So when the bait's been really dark, like you'll see when the you know when a when a scoop comes out of a box that had the tray in it where it was really dark, like that bait's a completely different color when it's in a really dark box the whole time and then all of a sudden right. it hits that bright sunlight too so who knows as long as that thing's hauling ass when you put it in the water if it's got on. scales and no red on it get it on Send your hook and fish it <laughs> yeah, totally. there you go you have a good one huh? i thought so it's fun and it's fun and i sure agree with this guy which is rory from lakeside says good morning guys i love the tackle store i put dana war sport fishing and me being a tackle store guy i love walking into other shops and seeing how things are merchandised and i think the the crew does such a good job at dana war he says i I always pop in there the second before jumping on the express to head over to the island or jumping on one of the trips to Dana Wharf. Uh, my question is, how many boats run out of the landing, and what's the longest trip that you guys do? It'd be so much fun to do a multi-day trip out of Dana Wharf and get to fish Catalina, Clemente, etc. That's from Rory and Lakeside. So, number of boats fishing, gosh, I think we're close to eight or nine. Um, wow. Plus a you know a small fleet of uh, charter six-pack boats. Um, as far as like multi-day stuff, like I, Marcus on the Fury, he's the owner operator of the Fury. Um, he's really the only boat that we have out of the landing that have berthing and bunk accommodations. So most of his open party stuff's overnight. I don't think he has any plans on doing any open party two day stuff, fishing, um, you know, Catalina or Clemente per se, but he, you know, does spend plenty of time off the beach on his two-day charters where he's you know he'll go fish you know the tanner or cortez or something come back into clemente and kind of you know fish his trip that way that's a cool uh, trip that's a great trip and it's you know been biting is what it sounds like um but we don't really have any two-day multi-day stuff out of our multi-day multi-island thing yeah and no intentions of doing that no i it's just not broke, we don't, no we don't have it, the birthing, man. and yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, that's just not what, what just don't he does. We totally. just don't do it. Well, let's continue our catch report. I like it. With the man, the surf guru himself, Gundy Gunderson, no stranger to the harbor of Dana Wharf. What up, Gundy? What's going on, guys? Hey, Wooly. Hey, good morning, Gundy. <laughs> How are you, Gundy? Bro? How's it going, guys? Yeah, there's chunks of uh, Gundy in that bait receiver. I'm yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I used to know those Opali by their first names. <laughs> <laughs> the big chunks. I got a seven-pound Opali off that receiver. Get out of here. Seven Get pounder. Get out of here. Jeez. And it took a it took a muscle, you know. So don't let them fool you that they eat peas. You know yeah. what I mean? At a certain point, they go carnivorous. <laughs> that's <laughs> anyways. Like hey, seven pounder. And really, and those things pull hard too. Yeah. Like that's a fish that doesn't need to be very big to pull hard. I can't imagine what a seven pounder would pull like. Well, this is the deal. When when boats would come up. They'd come out from under the receiver in between the boxes, and they'd pick at the bottoms of the sport boats or whatever boats. Then they'd retreat back into the boxes. So how I got this fish is there was a crack in a box, and I had a special rod that I didn't care about, and I just would fly line a muscle down between the two. And I lost more fish than I landed, but I eventually landed that fish. That's <laughs> you know cool. what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's well, you classic spend a little Gundy, time dude, on I love the, it. You, know, you spend a little time on the receiver. It. We figure these things yeah. out, right? Paying attention. Damn right, man. Yeah, that's cool, Gundy. <laughs> Well, they're swimming right under your nose. you got to try to catch them. Yeah, right. That's a fish in the I'm about to get you, boy. Anyways, we got some good fishing on the beach. You know, that big swell come in, and it really caused 
a little bit of issues with, you know, a lot of salad, you know, kelp and eelgrass and that. And the guys had to work through that. Some guys going weedless. But the bite was really, really good. Some nice catches this week. Hook, line, sinker reported, despite the swell conditions, good fishing. The halibut bite was hot up here. And, um, you know, it's it's midsummer, but but they're biting like it's spring. And, you know, there's some weird things going on. They also had some squid offshore this week off Santa Barbara, which is pretty strange for August. But I think, you know, we have warm water on the surface, maybe some cool water below. That might be the issue. El Capitan was the hot spot. They had uh, four guys fish from the shop. And one of them had three legal fish, another had two, two guys had four legal fish, and another guy had five legal fish, all in one session. I, you know, these fish were just bunched up. 29 to 33 inch fish, so that's, you know, that's not just legal. Those are nice quality fish. Another angler caught, photographed, and released a 40 inch halibut, and that was taken off Galita on a cherry berry flash minnow, you know, so the key is to find a little cleaner water, and as we go here, the water's cleaning up, but boy, that's some nice halibut fish, and that's something to look at. The other thing, too, a lot, a lot of leopard sharks, this was up and down the coast, saw a push on those leopards, some up to 30 pounds, and then a gaggle of angel sharks also. I had seven or eight angel shark catches reported, which is kind of rare, but this year we've had several angel sharks reported, so, you know, go figure. Um, the other thing, just fishing reported the Corbina fishing was excellent in Torrance, Manhattan beaches. You know, the guys from Big Fish said uh, Seal Beach there, Bolsa Chica, Sunset, good Corbina fishing. They also, uh, they're still catching those halibut, too, in and around L.A. Harbor. They had a 38-inch fish that was taken along Shoreline Drive on a live smelt. That's another nice one. Hogan's reported good croaker action in and around Dana Point Harbor. Natural baits like bloodworms, lugworms, mussels are working the best. Uh, my buddy's kid uh, got a 5-pound, 2-ounce along the shore jetty there on a blood worm. That's a real nice fish. And then finally Pacific Coast reported more good Corbina fishing. They had uh, some of the guys from the shop went out and they had four and five fish in the session and I think a 25 inch fish was the best quality fish there. So that's uh, that's real good fishing. Blood worms are a good backup. Sand crabs are you know, a lot of small ones, and sometimes you're not finding them, so make sure you bring a little backup bait. But uh, 25 inch Corvina, nothing to sneer about. That's a real nice fish. That's cool. Gundy, I, I got a question. You were talking about those angel sharks and the, the you know, the, the, the several of them that guys had. You, you bump into those things very often, and is it just me, or is that the meanest fish oh, that geez. is ever, like, yeah. it's the only fish I think I've ever caught where, like, dude, that thing is trying to get you. You know, you're trying to get a hook out of its mouth, like plenty of fish, you know, snap and bite and do whatever. Like that thing looks at you, like man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you if I get an opportunity. Yeah. I think it's the meanest cr- creature ever made. That mouth, yeah, it's it's after you, yeah. Mouth, yeah. <laughs> I don't like them. Well, it's really an aggressive predator. You know, you'd think you'd catch more in the surf line, but, uh, but. Um, you know, what they do is they, they kind of do what a halibut does, and they use the edges of their fins to bury in the sand, you know. So they're sometimes it's just two eyeballs, and sure. so they like outside the surf lying along the kelp edges and things like that. So, uh, you know, maybe there's a spawning thing that's, that's aggregating them or something like that, but you're right. They are a vicious. They they strike out of that sand. I, I saw some film Shark Week of them eating senoritas, you know, and the little senorita cruises over and it's over with, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, a great report as always, Gundy. Sure appreciate you taking the time to put so much killer info together for us, and we'll look forward to another great one next week. Got to log off. All right, you guys have Good a nice week, man. Thanks, Take buddy. care, Willie. See you. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. Sounds like surf is place to be right yeah, now with awesome. the way fishing's that was, going. Right, that's a good report. Yeah. yeah, we'll take that. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cook Up coming your way and a whole lot more talking Dana Worf with our great bro, Captain Brian Woolley. You're listening to Let's Talk Cook Up on the Let's Talk Cook Up app and radio network. Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena is the place to fill up your car, truck, and boat with the lowest gas and diesel prices. Did you know Summit is also the place to get the lowest prices on gourmet ice and snacks for your trip? $3.99 for 25 pounds of ice, as many as you want. That's half the price of other. 
others. Plus, you get 100 pounds of ice free with a 30-gallon fill. Kirkland products at lower prices than the store that makes them, plus dozens of great snacks for just 89 cents. They can now accommodate 24 cars and trucks to fuel at the same time, plus 12 diesel pumps, easy in and outs, too. Step into the Summit Bistro and enjoy what Martha and her crew have for you. Fresh-made burritos, sandwiches, and salad, along with beer, beverages, and, of course, always free ice. Summit gasoline low prices, friendly staff, free ice, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Wait, a 40-pound white sea bass off an inflatable Hobie kayak? Tell me about that. I'm Logan from Fastlane Kayaks on Mission Bay, and the whole story began when Ron Lane let my parents some Hobie Mirage iTrex to put on their boat and take out to Catalina Island. That's when I borrowed the iTrek 11, threw it in my car, and drove down to Baja for a fishing and camping trip. Ended up landing a bucket list 40-pound white sea bass on the inflatable. Dang that sounds even better than our mammoth trip when we packed up the kayaks in the car, snowboarded all morning, then drove down to the lakes, launched the iTrex, and fished for trout all afternoon. Honestly, the iTrek inflatables are the ultimate fishing platform. From trout in the Sierras, calicos at Catalina, and white sea bass in the Sea of Cortez, they can do it all. And we've documented all these trips, so check out Fastlane Kayaks on Instagram to see more. And if you think you want a kayak, but you're on the fence, come down to our shop, or right on Mission Bay, and we would be happy to throw one in the water and let you give it a try. So call Fastlane Kayaks to schedule a demo today. Offshore fishing is on. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. For bluefin, tuna, and yellowtail, nothing beats the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reels. Shimano Speedmaster 2 is also an extremely durable, high-performance lever drag reel for the more budget-minded angler. Both the Talica and Speedmaster 2 feature Shimano's Hagani body to prevent misalignment of movement moving parts under the heaviest of loads. For all your Shimano, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego.